seeing so many motorcycles in the parking lot. Yes. Thank you for riding. Yes. I was hoping I wouldn't be the only one. Good. All right. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, welcome to Biker Church, Monday night. Glad to have you here. Uh, a long time ago, over 30 years ago, um, things have changed now, but part of the uh, ordination process required several interviews with important people that were very intimidating. <clears throat> and uh, was I getting down close to, the, you know, this is a, one of the final interviews, and a the question they asked me was, Don, when you have your own church, you're ordained, and you're the man. Tell us what kind of church you want to have. What kind of church will your church be? And my answer was, I want to have a church that's fun. And there's all these guys sitting around in suits and everything, and they kind of looked at each other, and they, looked, and they said, well, we thought you would say, I want a church where, where the word is preached. I want a church where Jesus is lifted up. I want a church where people praise the Lord, you know, et cetera. And I said, well, I figured you already knew that or I wouldn't have made it this far. So I wanted to tell you what I was going to bring to the church. I want to make it fun. So in the spirit of that, we want to have some fun tonight. We've got five parodies to sing. Now, if you've never been to Biker Church before and you don't know what a parody is, I'm going to tell you, just hold on for the next 10 or 12 minutes. This won't last as long as your last colonoscopy. <laughs> All right, and because we're doing a few extra songs, I'm going to tell you, if you want to stand up and boogie, fine. If you want to sit, that's fine. You do whatever. Don't, don't worry about what the person in front or behind you, beside you is doing. Do whatever you want to do, okay? Just relax, have fun, be comfortable. In some circles, this song might be called Johnny Be Good. Not here. <laughs> stand up in the middle of the song. So now's your chance if you want to stand up for this one. This used to be called, in some circles, Long Tall Sally, but not here. Gonna tell you a story about Monday night. We come to praise the Lord and everything's all right. Oh, baby. Yeah, oh, baby. Oh, baby. Biker church tonight. We got the BC band. Without any 
7-Eleven in Missoula, Montana. If you're ever in Missoula, Montana, stop at the 7-Eleven, you might see him. I've heard reports. He did a song called Jailhouse Rock, but that's not what we call it. Well, the preacher threw a party at BC. The band was hot and the spirit free. The guy rode in on a big gold wing. You should have heard all those bikers sing. He's a rock. Yeah, Jesus is a rock. Everybody in the BC flock was praising Jesus the rock. Some ride in on a brand new hall. Some got bikes with a fancy paint job. Some can do a wheelie on the 33. Some you can hear before you see. He's a rock. Yeah, Jesus is a rock. Everybody in the BC flock was praising Jesus the rock. Praising Jesus the rock. Praising Jesus the rock. They can hear us in the whole block. Praising Jesus the rock. All right. How many Elvis fans out there are going to show your age? You know, I have a prediction. I have a prediction. When did Elvis die, supposedly? Like 73, 74, right? What is it? 77, thank you, okay. They're still playing his music, right? He's still one of the top, top earning dead celebrities. Can you imagine 50 years from now, anybody calling an oldie station and saying, play me some Eminem? How about some Lady Gaga? No, but they'll still be asking for Elvis. So we're going to do two by Elvis. He sang this one as All Shook Up. For us, it's All Prayed Up. Well, bless my soul, I've been set free because Jesus died upon that tree. Now I've been walking in the blood, I found the Lord. Ooh, I'm all prayed up for uh -huh. Well, my hands get shaky and my knees get weak, but the Lord helps me stand on my own two feet. Who do you think? Cause it can't be luck. I found the Lord. Ooh, I'm all prayed up. Uh huh. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Now, please don't think I will change my mind. I used to be mixed up, but I'm feeling fine. When I the one who loves me most And he fills my heart with the Holy Ghost Well, bless my soul I've been set free Because Jesus died upon that tree Now I've been washed in the blood I found the Lord Ooh, I'm all prayed up for uh -huh. mm, Yeah, yeah uh -huh. mm, Yeah I'm all prayed up. All right. all right, and a trip back through oldies time just wouldn't be complete without something by the late Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly had a girlfriend. Her name was Donna, and the name of the song was Oh Donna, but here tonight for us, it's Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. 
Please have a seat. I've also been asked to let you know that this coming <coughs> Friday night, right down the road here at uh, St. Bart's, they're having a bluegrass and southern gospel concert by Emmanuel at 7 p.m. And it's free. Okay? So, see that man right there if you have any questions. All right? He knows everything. Right? <laughs> okay. We only have one major announcement tonight. The first I want to say, God is good. All the time. And all the time. Let Jesus be seen in 2014. All right. The main thing I want you to know is this is the 160th week and only 14 days until our official Biker Church kickoff. That's two weeks from tonight. Okay? We have uh, paraphernalia and advertising things. If you want to grab on the table out there so that you can invite your friends and family to come. We're going to start off tonight with a little quiz. 
I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to ask you if you're right or wrong. But just kind of keep score, like maybe with your fingers. I'm going to read ten things. Each one that you think is in the Bible, just kind of, you know, to yourself, say, okay, I think that one is. No, that one's not. That one's not. Okay, that one is. Just kind of keep score, okay, to yourself. Is this in the Bible or not? Spare the rod, spoil the child. It's kind of, if you think it is, you know, count one on your own finger like this. All right? Is this in the Bible? Money is the root of all evil. No cheating, no out loud. <clears throat> All right, third one. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Okay, so I've given you three so far, so with your fingers you've either counted none, one, two, or three. God moves in mysterious ways. That's the fourth one. Is that in the Bible? Hate the sin, love the sinner. This too shall pass. Is that in the Bible? How about this one? God will not give you more than you can handle. How about this one? To thine own self be true. How about this one? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. And the last one, all things work together for good. So you've either counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or none. All right? Did anybody have 10? Anybody have 9? Anybody have 8, 7, 6, 7? The correct answer is 0. None of these are in the Bible. Now, some of these are based on biblical principles, but they're not in the Bible. In fact, hate the sin, love the sinner. You know who actually said that? Mahatma Gandhi. Yet you hear it in Christian circles all the time, and we've kind of adopted it, and we think, oh, well, yeah, that's in the Bible, but it's not. This too shall pass is actually from an old English poem called The Lament of the Doer. God will not give you any more than you can handle. It's kind of based on 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is faithful. He'll not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. To thine own self be true is actually from, somebody knows this, from lit class, Shakespeare. But let's look at the last one I said. That's where I want to go. This is actually part of a verse, which is Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So you see, it is not true that all things work together for good. All things will work together for good if you love God. So here's the question we want to try and address tonight. Do I love God? Now, a lot of people say, oh yeah, yeah, I love God. And if you ask them, well, how do you know you love God? Well, I just do. Yet, Jesus gave us a very easy way to discover and do a self-assessment as to whether or not we really love God. He said something very simple in John 14, 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commands. So the real test of whether or not you love God is if you do what Jesus says. For example, I'm going to read all the commands in the Bible. Or, I'm going to read this. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now listen to this. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you do these two things, you automatically be keeping all the other commands. For isn't it true that if you love God with all your heart, soul, and with your mind, that you will have no other gods before you, which is one of the commandments? Isn't it true if you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind that you will not worship idols? That you will not misuse the name of the Lord your God? That you'll keep His day holy? That if you love your neighbor as yourself, you'll honor your father and mother? 
that you won't murder, that you won't commit adultery, that you won't steal, you won't lie, and you won't covet. You see, those are the Ten Commandments. But you can sum them up in loving God with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. In fact, Jesus ramped it up a little. He said, you know, the law says you should not murder. I tell you, if you hate your brother, you have committed murder. He said, it says the law, do not commit adultery, but I tell you, if you lust, and he really came after the men, because let's face it, men, we have more of a problem with this than women do. If you lust after a woman, you have committed adultery with her. And to covet simply means to want, some, what, to want what somebody else has bad enough to try and figure out how to get it. So let's go back to the uh, Romans 8.28. All things work together for good. Here, here's usually how we approach things. I have here some flour. Now by itself, flour is not enjoyable. But I just wonder, is there anybody in here brave enough tonight that would want to come up here and have a nice big spoonful of flour? I'd be happy to give it to you. Okay, so we, we don't want that, right? This, this represents something unpleasant in our life. We say all things work together for good, but God, but God, I don't want this. I don't want a flat tire. I don't want to get laid off from my job. God, I don't want that, okay? What about this here? I know we have some chocolate lovers in here. I have some, some unsweetened cocoa. Anybody like a big spoonful of that? No, right? This is unpleasant. I don't want this. You don't say, God, man, I, you know, you say everything works together for good for those who love, but God, I don't want this. I don't want that neighbor in my life. I don't want God. You say everything works together for good, and I love you, but I don't want that. My grandfather, who was an alcoholic, used to always break a raw egg into a glass of beer, and I would stand there. I was about six years old. And I'd see that big old egg yolk, and then all of a sudden, any take, if I break this egg in the bag, any takers to eat a raw egg? No, I didn't think so. God, I don't want this. That guy at work, he bugs me. You know, you say everything works together for good. God, how is it? I just found out that, that, that I've got cancer. God, how does that work together for good? God, I love you. How's this working out? But you know, also, with all the bad things in life, comes a little sweetness occasionally. So I have some sugar. I wonder if anybody want to come up and have a big spoonful of sugar. You don't, you don't want it like that, right? A little bit, okay, but man, like that. But here's the thing. It takes all of these things if you want to make Ooh, a chocolate cupcake? Who would want a chocolate cupcake? Sure you do. But if I left the egg out, we're not going to get there. If I left the sugar out, no. If I left the cocoa out, if I left the... You see, it takes all this to get the good thing. And so when you're going through something bad in your life and you say, God, I don't want that part. I don't want... God is trying to say to you, all things will work together for good. You've got to have all of this to get the cupcake. I have four packages of cupcake. Would my cupcake holders go to the doors, please? I want you, as you uh, go out tonight, to remember that all things work together for good to those who love God. And individually, as they come along in your life, they may not be very pleasant. Sometimes they might be a little sweet. But there might be a lot of unpleasant things. But if you want the cupcake at the end, you've got to have everything for God to work it together. Let's please stand and pray. Lord, I confess that is there are some things that come up in my life that I don't want. They're not pleasing. I don't enjoy them. I wonder why me. Help me to remember you're taking all the things together as I love you, and you will work together, you will work them together for good. You will. It takes all the ingredients, good and bad, in life 
for us to get the reward that you have promised us. In Jesus' name.